Hello, I'm Doug McConnell, and we've got some great discoveries for you out here along the open road. We'll explore the Santa Cruz Mountains, recovering from the largest wildland fire in the region's recorded history, leading to the loss of cherished public assets in California's first state park. We'll discover hope rising from hardships as partners rally to give these mountain ecosystems and the people who love them a bright future. And we'll reveal the Bay Area's big wild in the little known and lightly visited Diablo range of mountains, also on the mend after a big burn in 2020, perhaps California's next great story of conservation. Beyond the beaches that Santa Cruz is most famous for runs a rugged fin of forest that reaches northward up the peninsula towards San Francisco. The thread that you know kind of connects everything is this almost island feel of open space and the biodiversity that's, that's here is remarkable. These mountains are mixing grounds for northern and southern California species of native plants and animals, making this terrestrial island in the sky truly unique. The Santa Cruz Mountains are really a, a global hotspot for biodiversity. We have really globally significant and rare ecosystems here. And there's a, a, a pride and a sense of responsibility that comes with that for those who live and, and work and, and recreate here. The cool thing about this landscape is not only how biologically diverse it is, but the human diversity here. But in the summer of 2020, this rare and beloved region faced the flames of a fierce wildland fire that raced from summits towards the sea, incinerating treasures, both personal and public. I've worked in Big Basin for 25 years. Never thought I would actually see the redwoods burn like that, but it, it burned incredibly hot. Almost the entirety of the park burned over in 24 hours. Despite heartbreaking losses, most famously of the historic visitor center and other cherished structures and camping facilities in Big Basin, California's first state park, nature and people are rallying, rising from the ashes with a new sense of hope. The landscape's going to look different for a very long time. In all of our lifetimes, it will not look like we remembered it from when we were there. And that's painful. On the other hand, uh, we have a chance now, with sort of a reset on that entire system. In August of 2020, the enormous CZU fire burned more than 85,000 acres here in the Santa Cruz Mountains, the largest and most intense wildland fire in this region's recorded history. Oh, with our rapidly changing climate, these mountains face increased threats of fires, drought, and other challenges in the years ahead. Thankfully, many public, private, and nonprofit organizations working closely with the public are partnering together to give the ecosystems and the people of the Santa Cruz Mountains a resilient future. On this journey, we'll visit San Vicente Redwoods, adjacent to Bonnie Dune and Davenport. But we'll start in a healthy redwood forest, spared from the big burn of 2020, and very near Big Basin State Park, which is, for now, mostly closed to the public. When you go into the park now and you, and you see what's coming back, it's remarkable, the resilience of, of the forest and the regrowth. As nature launches her comeback, Public agencies, nonprofit conservation organizations, and local communities are collaborating closely for a bright and sustainable stewardship future all across the Santa Cruz Mountains. Whenever I think of endeavoring on a new stewardship project, I immediately think of partners and who can help and who can enhance this and who can bring their expertise. Laura McClendon is with the Semper Virens Fund, a nonprofit organization whose founders led the effort to create Big Basin State Park in 1902 and has been hard at work protecting nature and providing equitable public access to it throughout these mountains ever since. Land stewardship is about a relationship with the land and a relationship to uh, other landowners and people who visit the, the land itself. Two of the fund's primary longtime partners, Chris Sporer with California State Parks and Lisa Lurie 
with the Resource Conservation District of Santa Cruz County are working with the fund and many others to better conserve, restore, and carefully steward these mountain ecosystems so they can thrive despite the challenges ahead. Partnerships are, are essential. No one agency, no one landowner can do it all themselves. And it's that the, the natural resources are really what connect us all. The longtime partnership between Semper of Irons Fund and California State Parks recently led to the creation of a new gateway to Castle Rock State Park, which fortunately survived the fires of 2020. In some ways, it's become a destination unto itself, with many practical, informative, and engaging amenities never before available, including a native plant garden tended by the Amamutsun and Mawekma Ohlone tribal bands, also primary partners today, and wise stewards of these lands for thousands of years. And now the entrance is open to the public every day. It's being loved m much more than we could have hoped for. And that's then something that's going to become a permanent part of the park. Enhancing the health and resilience of ecosystems across these mountains also means caring for water quality and quantity in rivers and creeks by building habitat in some places for fish and other wildlife and by removing long-standing barriers to stream flow in others, like Mill Creek Dam. After many years of planning and assessment and design, we're now permitting and we'll be going to implementation of this project this year. To take the dam down. To take the dam down. All of these and many other forward-thinking collaborative initiatives offer hope that we can meet the needs of people and nature and the crises of climate change including reducing the risks of future fires. This is the San Vicente Redwoods. It's about a 9,000 acre park size property in Santa Cruz County, north of Davenport. The 2020 CZU fire scorched this area too, leaving little of this landscape uncharred. This was a very high intensity burn area where it just cooked the entire canopy and everything on the forest floor and probably changed the soil chemistry as well. But the fire did not cook everything here. San Vicente Redwoods, owned by Semper Virens Fund and other nonprofit partners, had earlier conducted a prescribed burn on this portion of the land. And the results are striking. Laura, the, the fire burned right nearby here, right here. That looks like it's just a bunch of dead sticks. This is a, like a green garden. Why is this so different? Yeah, absolutely. It was because it was intentional. It's one of the only places in the whole property that burned in this kind of beneficial, low intensity way. And we think that has a lot to do with our management of this specific area. Conducting small fires we can control helps minimize the dangers of big fires we can't. Just one example of how many partners with growing public support are carefully managing the rare and vulnerable assets of the Santa Cruz Mountains in many ways, now and for the long run. An event like, like that we've gone through with the CZU fire really puts a fine point on the fact that we are managing these lands for the future and for everybody's future. When we come back, looking further into the future of the Santa Cruz Mountains and Big Basin State Park. Open Road is made possible by the generous support of our underwriters, dedicated to protecting our natural and historical treasures in the Bay Area and beyond. Additional support is provided by these institutions, also caring for our special environmental and cultural legacies and making them accessible to each and every one of us, now and for all time. The Santa Cruz Mountains have long attracted visitors to enjoy the awe-inspiring beauty of protected old-growth redwood forests in preserved sanctuaries such as California's first state park, Big Basin, opened to the public in 1902. Big Basin was saved from the saw by visionary citizen activists, members of what was then called the Semper Virens Club. Today, the Semper Virens Fund continues that deep commitment to the forest. 
and to our future. And Sarah Barth is with me. Sarah, you're the executive director of the Semper Virens Fund. And Semper Virens have been in these woodlands of the Santa Cruz Mountains for more than a century, protecting the forests, uh, making them accessible increasingly to each and every single one of us. What in the next century? What are the big challenges? What are your, your big dreams? Yeah, 100 years ago, Semper Virens Fund was dealing with millions and millions of acres of redwood forests. In the meantime, we've lost 95% of those forests, so we're dealing with the remaining 5%. And so every acre becomes incredibly precious from a conservation standpoint. The threats that we're facing have also changed. It used to be that it was logging and clear cutting that jeopardized these forests. Today, it's development pressure, you know, surrounding urban areas that encroach on these forests, as well, of course, as the existential threat of climate change. And climate change is upon us with the extraordinary fires that we've had here and now drought once again. How do you make these, these landscapes more resilient to a rapidly changing climate? Yeah, we can't protect these redwood forests from climate change, but we can help make them as resilient as possible in the hopes that they can withstand the impacts of climate change. And the way we do that is by protecting larger and larger amounts of acreage, ensuring that one protected forest is connected to another so species can migrate between the two. And of course, we really are now engaging much more actively in forest management to try to reduce the risk of catastrophic wildfire. And talk about catastrophic wildfire. Big Basin State Park, our beloved first state park, Semper Virens, essential in establishing it, burned catastrophically. What's your counsel to us as we look at, to the future of Big Basin State Park and what it might mean to all of us? You know, the restoration of the forests at Big Basin is going to be on nature's timeline, and that's a long time horizon. It took a thousand years for those trees to get the way they were and make them so beloved, and it's many of them are going to live for another thousand years. So we just need to be patient as nature restores itself. The opportunity that the fire brings is to really reimagine Big Basin and have it become a model for parks of the 21st century. And by that, I mean parks that are welcoming and inclusive to all, a park that is uh, designed to be climate resilient and fire wise, facilities that are ecologically sensitive and light on the land. And so that is the perhaps the silver lining of this forest is that Big Basin can become a model for conservation all over the country for how we do it right in the 21st century. It's an opportunity for all of us to lean in, to be supportive, to be helpful, to be patient, and to come back and visit that park again in a new and, uh, and hopeful way. Sarah, thanks for what you're doing, and uh, we'll see you out here in these woods. Thank you, Doug. When we come back, journey into the back of the beyond of the Bay Area, also recovering from a big burn. It's one of the most rugged, least known, most intact, most highly biodiverse places in the entire state. And we think it's gonna be California's next great conservation story. You know, this is the highest concentration of golden eagles in the, in the entire United States, in the entire world. This is one of the last islands of wilderness, essentially, that we have in the United States. What's well, amazing, um, we're, we're 20 miles from downtown San Jose and a million miles from civilization on one of the tiniest, most beautiful roads in the entire state. Welcome to the Diablo Range, 150 miles of mysterious mountains most of us have never explored, stretching from near Mount Diablo in the north all the way to Kern County down south. Few people live in the heart of the Diablo Range and fewer roads cross it. This is the big wild in our backyard. And in 2020, 625 square miles of it burned in the immense SCU complex fires. Thankfully, relatively few human structures and no lives were lost. And nature in this dry and fire prone landscape is surging back to life. Well, this beautiful spot is called the San Antonio Valley and it is in the heart of the Bay Area's Big Wild in the northern reaches of the Diablo Range between Livermore and Mount Hamilton. Well, in the summer of 2020, about 400,000 acres burned all around this spot in the third largest wildfire in California's history. Now in the spring of 2021, 
the colors of nature on the mend are blooming all around. We venture into the big wild to see some of the spring flower show nature put on here in the wake of the fires with Seth Adams and Sean Burke with the conservation nonprofit Save Mount Diablo. Since the organization's founding 50 years ago, over 120,000 acres of nature's precious gems on and in the vicinity of Mount Diablo itself have been conserved. Now it's working with many others to save much more deeper in the Diablo Range, which today is only 24% protected. What I would hope uh, 50, 100 years from now is that there's a string of preserved land from Mount Diablo all the way down to Kern County along the spine of California and that when people look up at those ridge lines above the many millions, they will know that they are protected. Our day-long excursion takes us from San Jose to Livermore, stopping along the way to marvel at nature's beauty, resilience, and diversity. We pass over the 4,200-foot summit of Mount Hamilton and soon see the effects of the 2020 fires and nature blossoming once again as we dive deeply into this section of the Diablo Range. And then when you hit the burned areas, the bright green grass will be your indication of grassland regeneration al already happening. And then as you come over into the heart of the Diablo Range, you'll start to see burnt trees and charcoal soils, and you'll see 10, 30, 50% areas that have started regenerating. Even though we've seen all these things that have been just vaporized, as soon as you stop, you get out of the car, you look down at the creek, there's all this life that's coming back and you look at the hillsides here, there's all of these vine plants, the man root specifically, and especially that has water stored deep down in the earth. And what, what people don't get from fires is, all those nutrients locked up in the things that burned are supercharging the soil with fertilizer, and even normal wildflowers are gonna be spread over wider areas. They're gonna be larger in size, bigger in number. But we also have this incredible list of fire followers that only show up after fires, some, after the Morgan fire, we had plants that had not shown up in 25, 40, 80. One species had not shown up in 125 years. And they were back in their whispering bells and fire poppies and golden eardrops. And not only do they show up, but they show up in the millions. That's one of the cool things about when these fires rage through here is it's kind of like a reset of the clock. It takes us back to primordial day one in a lot of senses. And so, all of these individuals are so specialized and have so evolved to thrive in an environment like this. And those are the things that are really driving us out here right now is, is to see exactly what is adapting the best to this environment. The sky's the limit, it's, it's exploring the unknown. Save Mount Diablo is conducting a three-year analysis of this recovery from the SCU fire complex called Diablo Range Reveal. What's clear so far is that this was mostly a good fire for nature's wild kingdom of native plants and animals. Drive slowly out here and be on the lookout for those who live in the neighborhood, often on the go. The golden eagle might go by. You might see some elk, you might see some antelope. If you get lucky, you see it all in one. It's, uh, there's a lot going on. I think that's what uh, is so incredible about it. That's why this is the big wild. Big wild for sure. The sparse human development in the Diablo Range allows wildlife to travel with unusual freedom across vast and connected natural landscapes, strengthening their populations and capacities to move and adapt to a changing climate and conditions on the ground. More long-term protection can provide more promise for the future. Yeah, Del Puerto Canyon, that is the jewel. As far as, to me, I've really fallen in love with this place. Our final stop in the back of the beyond is Del Puerto Canyon, winding 22 miles through the Diablo Range to the Central Valley. It's an incredibly deep, biodiverse canyon. The soils have made it such that the wildflowers you'll see there are incredible. Birds love this kind of environment. And you know, if you stop and, and listen for a moment, you can hear incredible songbirds. Roadrunners are a very common thing to see here. And I've seen you know, half a dozen golden eagles or more at a time. Uh, and it's also a raven haven, as I like to call it. They're everywhere out here, and it's amazing. Given its stunning natural values, Seth and Sean are very clear about their vision for the future of the Diablo Range. You know, to me, this is one of the most important things to be focusing on in the, in the conservation world right now. This is, this is it. 
There are some places that are so biodiverse, they, they, they should be preserved in their own right. But there are also some places that are so fire prone that they shouldn't be built in. Um, we, sh we should be avoiding development in the Diablo Range. Um, we should be concentrating preservation here. When we come back, celebrate a 50-year legacy of saving nature with more to come. Open Road is made possible by the generous support of our underwriters, dedicated to protecting our natural and historical treasures in the Bay Area and beyond. Additional support is provided by these institutions, also caring for our special environmental and cultural legacies and making them accessible to each and every one of us, now and for all time. A Save Mount Diablo has an extraordinary record of achievement to show for itself over the past 50 years, protecting tens of thousands of acres on Mount Diablo itself and all around the northern portion of the range that bears its name. Well, here's a look at some of the lovely lands Save Mount Diablo has protected for nature and for us. To celebrate its first 50 years of protecting nature's treasures, Save Mount Diablo is in the final stages of a major fundraising campaign to provide the resources needed to keep as much of the Diablo range as possible forever wild. Given its track record so far, and with generous public support, the future for wildness in these mountains and our access to it in the next half century looks promising. For more information about Save Mount Diablo, Semper Virens Fund, and locations and organizations featured in this show, go to nbcbayarea.com slash open road. Well, that's our show. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Doug McConnell, and we'll see you next time right here with more discoveries along the open road.